Because neither Tommy Hearns nor Marvin Hagler has ever had box office magic by himself. Neither of them transcend boxing as public figures in the way that Muhammad Ali and Ray Leonard did. Nor is there any good versus evil or black versus white hype to this fight. What is it then? What I come up with is this. It's great to want to be great. And it's widely recognized in the sports world, if not beyond it, that these two quality athletes desperately want to be great. And tonight, man to man, they'll decide which one of them is the best at his trade. Whom you like depends on how you can resolve this equation. Hagler is the strongest fighter Hearns has ever fought. Hearns is the best fighter Hagler has ever fought. We're here to get the answer. Now back to Barry and Ray. And the entourage now of Thomas Hearns making its way toward the ring here. And Hearns, of course, surrounded by many admirers from the city of Detroit. And there's a good look at Thomas Hearns. Ray, interesting to note, he was very, very loose when we saw him in his locker room before the fight. Well, Tom looked very relaxed, very confident. And uh, he didn't have that intense look on his face. He seemed to know exactly where he was and exactly what's going to happen. So Thomas Hearns looking all business, of course, and it has been the want of marvelous Marvin Hagler to make his, make his opponent wait in the ring. And, of course, everyone having anything to do with this fight will try to avoid just such a circumstance. Got to be a definite case of nerves on both parts here. And Larry Merchant, we talked briefly with Sugar Ray Leonard at the start of this program about just how each man holds up to the big event. I'm sure you have some thoughts on that subject. I don't see any reason to question at this stage of their careers that they can't handle an event of this magnitude and that's one of the reasons why it's become such a big event that they have proven themselves uh, and that everybody expects to see a contest here uh, like all fights decided on the merits of the fighters decided by their strength decided by their styles decided by their will uh, those are the factors that will decide this fight. It's a long trip, Ray, from the locker room into the ring here at Caesars Palace, set up here in the parking lot. What are the thoughts that a fighter has making this long journey through the crowd? Well, Barry, so many things go through a fighter's mind, especially once he's headed towards the ring. The fact of the matter is, all the things that he say, all the verbal assaults that he's made against his opponent or challenger, well, now he can live up to that. With Thomas, Thomas made a lot of uh, verbal assaults to have and have to do the same thing. But I, people think this is going to be a fill-out process. I think something's going to happen in the very first round because these guys know there's so much at stake. Larry Merchant, let me ask you one thing. There was some speculation during the course of this past week here in Las Vegas that Tommy Hearns might have done some damage to an already injured right hand. Any elaboration on that? I don't know of anything, that, anything that's factual. Everybody knows that he's had some problems along the way with his hands. Uh, you know, he has the build of a thoroughbred, uh, and sometimes he hits people on the head, and, uh, and his hands have hurt. And as you recall, he was once laid off for uh, many months because of a hand injury, and I think he wears extra protection for his hand when he's sparring. So perhaps that gave uh, some speculation to uh, that there was something wrong with the hand. Hagler coming toward the ring now, his trainers, the Petronellis, they've been together for 18 long years. And this, of course, is the culmination of 18 years of hard work. Marvelous Marvin Hagler, of course, he had his game face on Ray somewhere around Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. And he, and he appeared to be very relaxed. He was able to talk to, to the press and meet with some of the uh, his fans. He's very, very serious about this. No joviality as there was in the locker room of Thomas Hearns a little bit earlier. Marvin Hagler has been business since we got here on Thursday. He has done the obligatories, as you mentioned. He's talked to the press, and the crowd definitely seems to be more in support of the champion than they do the challenger, Thomas Hearns. The crowd is very supportive of Hagler. Um, and another thing to bring out, this fight here, because Hagler searches for recognition, he thought he would get it after Roberto Duran, but I think this fight here has enough significance to give Hagler what he wants and what he desires. People are saying that he was too conservative against Roberto Duran, and you have to have the feeling that tonight he can't not be conservative. He can be. He has to be aggressive. He has to miss it authority right away. And again, Barry, the first round will be a key round to, to pretty much know what's going to happen in the, in the fight. 
There's a look at the record of marvelous Marvin Hagler, 62-2. and two. He's got 50 knockouts. This, of course, is 11th title defense. He dearly wants to break the record set by Carlos Monzon. So that is the story of marvelous Marvin Hagler. Historically, Tommy Hearns has been the faster starter of the two. Well, Tommy has always jumped on top of his, his opponents because he's always overshadows his opponent because of his height and reach advantage. There's a look at the tail of the tape, and you talk about the reach advantage, and it's really not quite as great as you might have expected. Really only a three-inch a three inch reach advantage for Thomas Hearns over Marvin Hagler. I'd like to make a comment about the weight. When Tommy Hearns fought Ray Leonard, he weighed less than Ray Leonard, trying to prove he was a real welterweight. Now he weighs more than Hagler, trying to prove <laughs> he's a real middleweight. <laughs> And here's a look at the common opponents of these two. And again, there's little to choose. Roberto Duran, probably the most significant, but perhaps Thomas Hearns got Duran a little bit more on a down than he did on an up. And here, of course, is that tool that we've been using here at HBO for now three occasions. Yeah, this is our computer toy, and it will give you uh, some kind of a, a look at how many punches these fellas throw. You see Hagler against Duran, Hagler against Hampshire, roughly 50 punches per round. The same thing for Hearns, as you'll notice. Roughly 50 punches per round, landing somewhere between 20 and 30. So that'll be some kind of yardstick as we move along. And the rules for tonight's fight, and they are as most championship fights, the 10-point must system. Three knockdown rule, of course, is waived. So, too, the standing gate count. There will no be no standing gate count. You can only be saved by the bell in the final round. Three judges, of course, scoring the fight. That has been a vote of contention, incidentally, with Marvin Hagler. But right now, what's left, really, is to get on with it. So let's go up to the ring announcer, Chuck Hall, for all the pre-fight festivities. Ladies and gentlemen, the officials are signed by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for the next event of the evening. The judges are Dick Young of Los Angeles, California, Herb Santos of Reno, Nevada, and Harry Gibbs of England. The timekeeper is Charlie Roth, counting at the knockdowns, Jane Broadfoot. The attending physicians at ringside, Drs. Donald Romeo, Flip Omansky, and Charles Filippini. Your referee for the next event of the evening is Mr. Richard Steele. This is the main event of the night. 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. Introducing, in the red corner, the challenger, the WBC super welterweight champion, fighting out of Detroit, Michigan, weighing 159 and three quarter pounds. His professional record consists of 40 wins, one defeat with 34 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Thomas the Hitman. And in the blue corner, fighting out of Brockton, Massachusetts, weighing 159 and one quarter pounds, with a professional record of 60 wins, two defeats, two draws, and 50 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the undisputed middleweight champion of the world, marvelous Marvin Hagler. Our Pat, Pat, good eight, let's go. Okay, I gave both fighters the instructions in the dressing room. I'm just cautioning you now. Obey my command at all times. Shake hands. Good luck for both of you. As Ray said, Tommy Hearns usually likes to establish dominance early in the fight. I expect for that reason that Marvin Hagler will look for will look to come on and counterpunch at least in his first and perhaps through the first several rounds, looking for an opening if Hearns opens himself up. The early rounds could really dictate how this fight will go. The first one is the key round. We're underway. And the pace is up tempo right at the opening bell. Hagler being the aggressor. Hearns working that jab. He has a very quick jab. There's no denying it. And he caught Hagler with two good jabs and a right hand that might have hurt Hagler. Tremendous pace in the first round. I expect this, Barry. Both guys are going at it. Hearns getting the better of it right now. Both the guys 
gets his wings up. So whip this corner chin. That was Mako Bell. Left hand by Hagler that stood to her straight up. And a right hand. The both men have fought the wrath of the other. Tommy is hurt. Come back to his legs a little shaky, unsteady. Just uses defense. He's walking towards Harris. He's doing the right thing now. Harris is on his bicycle. Hagler now is going to his body. Remember, Rodan caught Marvin Hagler early on also. There's another good straight right hand by Hagler and another. Now Harris is using his movements. He's, he's trying to uh, throw Hagler off balance. Harris coming with a right hand lead that time. Both fighters are really off balance. Hagler leading with the right hand, but he's kind of lunging with it. There's another right hand. Back turns into the ropes. Watch for Hagler's hook. Now that was the right hand of Tommy Hearns, and it did catch Hagler, but he didn't take a backward step there. Another good right hand by Hearns. Hagler working his body now, trying to slow him Tommy down. These guys are exerting a great deal of energy, Baron. Tremendous pace in the first round. Blood coming from the face of Marvin Hagler. Can't tell yet where it's coming from. We'll see. Both guys will definitely be winded in the next round. It is over the right eye, I believe, of Marvin Hagler. We'll wait till we get him. And there's a lot of blood early on here. An awful lot of blood on the face of Marvin Hagler. It is in a place where it could do serious damage. We'll know between rounds when we get into the corner. Hagler punishing Hearns now. But it is Hagler who is bleeding. This is still the first round. <laughs> The second round, these guys would definitely pace themselves. There has been no boxing at all, just fighting here. Just slugging, blood on the face of Marvin Hagler. Again, we can't quite tell where it's coming from while Hagler continues to dish out punishment. And now Hearns bounces right back. This may be the most brutal even round you've ever seen in boxing. did not use their boxing skills. They just went in there and just unleashed all kinds of punches. They were off balance. This time, Hearns, second round, Hearns is pretty much using his skills. He's boxing. I believe, as Larry Merchant said, that both men have taken the best shot of the other. I was on the top of the head. That's the punch I'm looking for to Hagler pretty much landing on Tommy. The hook. Because Tommy has a tendency to lean back. And Hagler comes with that looping Right hook. There is a swelling under the eye of Marvin Hagler as well, and also a little bit of blood under as well as over it. There was a left hand by Hagler, backs Hearns up. Again, Tommy is more so the one-punch knockout, whereas Marvin is an accumulation of There's another straight right hand. That one also hurt Thomas Hearns. Hearns backs up, gets his breath, and comes right back. Hagler has been effective with a right-hand lead. I like Marvin's tactic so far. He's walking his man down. Keep those hands high. Thomas Hearns fighting a very effective fight so far. He has Marvin Hagler cut. Well, cut is really more above the nose than it is over the eye, although it can cause him problems. There's no question about that. There's also a little blood 
what Hagler wants to do, he wants to get time against the ropes. I don't like what Tommy's moving. He's he's really off balance. He's not moving with good balance. Great step out, step out. One minute remaining here in the second round. Hearns leading with the right hand. Both yep. men leading with the right Tom hand. Tom just put both feet together. Very dangerous. Look at him. He's off. He's down. awkward. He definitely is awkward. This is when Hackley needs to throw that hook. Tom's just standing right in front of Marvin. Hearns said he had to keep that foot outside of Hagler to be effective with the jab. That was a hook. Good left hook. And Hearns left his feet. Hearns no, is hurt. That was a hook game, Barry. Hearns, Hearns is definitely hurt. He is definitely Let's hurt. And now this is where Marvin should take control. Hearns was holding Marvin Hagler's right hand there. Now he tries to fight back. Takes the right hand. Takes the left hand. Hearns against the ropes. He's on rubber legs. Another good right hand by Hagler. Now this is when Hagler really goes good. to work. Thomas shouldn't be here against the ropes. Trying to weather the storm here in round two. Big round for Marvin Hagler. Hagler was really on with it. Watch Tommy Legs as he walks back to his corner. Whether he's steady. A little rubby leg. Once again, Marvin Hagler hit her in some of his best shots. But there, the accumulation of shots seemed to have some impact as that round wore on. You've got to put a band.
also stated if Tommy Hearns should lose his fight in the fashion in which it happened, he will retire. Well, it took him, we were talking about this before the fight, right? It took Tommy Hearns a year to recover from the beating that you gave him. And this was worse because he was knocked out cold. And Marvin Hagler was simply dominant. Let's take another look at it, Ray. And I think this, as Larry Bircher mentioned, it was a cumulative effect. And it wasn't really boxing that was at stake. It was just a matter of Hagler fighting uh, the type of street fight. He stayed on top of Tommy. Tommy here's on Queer Street. Hagler, a good finisher. You saw that right hand. I think you made a key point there, too. Hagler is a good finisher, and he really knows, although this was obvious, when his man is hurt. Well, here, Tommy's eyes rolling, rolling around. He was definitely hurt. Now, here we have another shot. And the right hook, which was the key punch, and I made that point earlier that that would be the punch that would pretty much put Hearns out. Well, another thing that we talked about, too, the first time that Thomas Hearns hit Marvin Hagler with the right hand, Hagler didn't step back. But a couple of times, Marvin was shaken by Thomas' right hand. And after a while, I knew that the accumulation of punches to the body, to the head, and Tommy would retreat, that it was more so in Hagler's favor. But well, it's a tremendous victory. And Marvin Hagler, after he fought Roberto Duran here, really wanted the recognition as the great middleweight. And frankly, it wasn't a great fight. I don't see how anybody could not acknowledge the fact that Marvin Hagler was a marvelous, to coin his coin of phrase, use his name, marvelous middleweight champion. A very proud champion, a very uh, dedicated champion, and he proved that. But again, this fight did not show boxer skill. It was just a matter of hard determination and a great deal of power. But the fact is, we've seen Marvin Hagler when he does show good boxing skill. Well, again, Barry, we look, take a look, and that right hook puts hers on Queer Street. Tommy here is hurt. Doesn't know exactly where he is. His hand, look at his hands. His hands are dropped. And it's a couple punches that put him down. And Thomas Hearns is looking for a place to fall down after that right, right hook. It landed above the eye, it looked like, on the side of the head. It was a tremendous punch.